Well, hello, children, and welcome to the history of the entire world class. Today, we are traveling back in time to meet a famous mathematician named Sir Isaac Newton. So the first thing we do is we hike up our pants a little bit, just like this, and we wiggle our toes a little bit, just like this, and then we are, uh, dance! Right back through time. Right back to the ripe old year of 1665. You see, one day, Mr. Sir Isaac Newton is sitting under this hurt tree, uh, which happens to be an apple tree, and he was uh, writing in his diary when all of a sudden, uh, when all of a sudden, oh no, kids! You see, what's supposed to happen right now was an apple supposed to fall from this tree onto that man's head. And it's very funny, you see, but something else happens too, something very historical. Hmm. I know. I've seen this while traveling through history from time to time. We must be stuck in a thought bubble. A brain fart, if you will. You see, a brain fart is when you get stuck in an idea and you can't solve or figure something out. And all of time freezes until you figure out the right answer. So we need to help out this guy right here. Uh, excuse me. Sir, Mr. Sir Isaac Newton, sir. Hmm? Yes, who's there? I'm Mr. Er, uh, Hister. I'm a big fan of your work. Yes, well, I have this mathematical problem that I just can't figure out, and I'm having a bit of a brain fart. I knew I smelled a brain fart. Well, maybe we can help you out. Oh, that would be amazing, because I just feel stuck today. So here's the problem. I have these 10 apples up there in the branches, see? And I'm trying to imagine how many would be there if there were four less. For you see, my wife needs four apples for making her classic four apple pie. Well, that sounds like a real problem. Now let's work through this. So let's count these apples first. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Uh, ten. Yeah, ten. There's ten. Very good. Now, you want to imagine what it would be like to have four less apples. You're saying the equation is actually ten minus four. Yes! Oh, but that's not really that much help. I'm still exactly where I started. Oh, we'll never figure this out, and I'll never be a great mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh! This guy's gone bananas. Now we have to count bananas, too? Oh! Now hold on right there, Mr. Sir Isaac Newton. I have an idea. What if we count out four apples that are right near each other? One, One two, two, three, three a four. four. Yeah, there's four. And we cover those up with our hand. So it's like they went away. Okay, now what? Well, now we just count the rest of the apples that aren't covered up to see how much will be left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's six. Six apples remain. So ten minus four equals six. Then you better write that one down. I will. Well, let's stand back now, kids, and see if we fixed history. So there's Sir Isaac Newton writing in his diary, and all of a sudden, ouch! An apple falls on his head, and in that moment, <gasps> Eureka! Sir Newton realized that all things were pulled down from the air towards the center of the Earth. And he called this theory gravity, which is pretty awesome, since that's what keeps our bodies here on the ground. Because without it, we'd all be floating around like we we're in space. Ah, yeah, space. I remember space very. <laughs> Gravity, huh? <clears throat> well, see you kids next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye.